it's Dank Sauce. Please like and subscribe for Unreal Engine stuff. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to do like a combination lock. It's a game mechanic you see in a bunch of spoopy games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill. It's like combination, usually like three variables. We, we could we could do more, but I really wanted it to work on a game controller. And there's not a lot of videos out there to do it. So, so basically this would work with like any locked item. You know, you could do this with a door or something. In my game, you, you walk up and you see there's a keypad here. It's not the best looking keypad, but it works with the gamepad, your controller. You can move around the arrows and hit enter. If you have the wrong combo, it was eh, eh, backs you out. There's a hint. It says, who's, who's the statue? So you, the player can run back over to the statue. Oh, there's a statue. Something written on it. And then the player would be like, oh, that, that's obviously Dua Lipa lyrics, like Queen. And then you run over to type Dua. Doing this with my game controller. Boom, unlocked. Now the player can get the sword and go kick some ass. And making the widget itself, the keypad itself, isn't the, the hardest thing, but it does take a lot of time. Uh, so we're going to make this a multi-part series. The first video will make the widget itself. The uh, second video, I'll show you how to implement it. Different ways you could pull up the keypad and different things you could do once the puzzle is solved or the combination is entered. And then another video, I think I'll do like an actual static mesh lock uh, with like rotating numbers and stuff. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I did is I just opened up a new third person example map in Unreal Engine 5. I made it in Unreal Engine 4, but I'm sure it'll, it'll work the same way. And we'll just go ahead and make a new folder here. Just to get started, I'll do an underscore combo lock project. So I don't lose any of my folders here. And I have a link in the description for two image files and it's the up and the down arrow. We're just gonna use that in the widget. So just drag it in, drag both files in. And we'll just go ahead and open them up and in compression settings, we'll just change it to user face, user interface 2D, save. We'll do that on the up arrow as well. Save. And then we'll go ahead and make the widget. So I'll right click user interface, widget blueprint. I'm going to call it W underscore combo lock. We could call it keypad. We'll open it up. And basically, what I want is a row of up arrows, the numbers, and a row of down arrows, and an enter button. So I'll start with the canvas panel. Drop that in there. And then first, I think we'll need a vertical box. Yeah. A vertical box to put the horizontal boxes in. And you drag that right here. We're going to want to center it. So you go to anchor, center it. And then when you center it, you need to zero out the positions. And then for it to be in the very center, we need to align it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this is going to be size to content. So this, it'll, the size will be determined on uh, what we the buttons inside of it. Next, we'll need a horizontal box. And we'll go ahead and make a button. That way I can uh, just duplicate the buttons. So first, let's just stick one button inside the horizontal box. And then the button will have our image 
the arrow images. Search for image. Drag that into the button. And with image selected, come over here and inside of brush, you'll have an image option. This is where we want our up arrow. Now the file's really big, uh, but I did this earlier and I figured out a good size. Let me look it up. A hundred, a hundred by a hundred. So an image size, we'll just do a hundred by one hundred. And we can now duplicate the button. So with button selected, duplicate once, duplicate it again. And you know what, to save time, for the down arrows, we'll go to the horizontal box and we'll duplicate this, okay? And now we just need to switch the arrows. So go to image and hold control and select all the images. And we can come here and look for the down arrow. Boom, way too big. Hit it with the one hundo. Keep this 100, bam. All right, and then we need another horizontal horizontal box uh, to put the numbers in. With it selected, you could uh, move it to the middle with these arrows. And we need to add a border. <clears throat> and then inside the border there will be text this text will be a variable let me think what I want to call it I'm going to call it combo text one And in the content, the text, let's just have it read one letter for now. So I'll just put an A. <clears throat> and the size I found earlier, 96 will work. Oh, and let's change the color to black so we can read it. Mm hmm. And inside the border, we'll also have a spacer. This is just for visuals. Where'd my spacer go? That was weird. Okay, I want it on that side. Do like a 35, I think that will work. And now we can duplicate this guy. Oh, our space removed. This widget stuff's just kind of, uh, kind of just takes time here. And uh, we're gonna duplicate it again. <clears throat> and this spacer needs to move here. I'm going to duplicate the spacer now. This is just visual. I hope you don't get lost. I'm just trying to make this look decent. Oh, and you know what I forgot? I want to click on the horizontal box. And on horizontal alignment, I'm going to set it to the center like that. Okay, hopefully I didn't lose y'all on that. I just want th this box here, spacer, box, spacer. And that way it's set up. Now the naming me messed up here. I wanted this to be combo text three. All right, we're
we're almost done with the visual part. Now we want a, a enter button here. I'm gonna put that inside of a horizontal box. I don't know if I need to. Horizontal box inside the vertical box. Where'd it go? It's at the bottom. And this is where we will place our enter button. Button inside the box. I'm going to rename this our enter button. It will need text inside of the button. Which will say enter inside the content. We'll do the same thing with the horizontal selected. We'll center it. I think I want a spacer in there between the arrows and the enter button. It's right behind the horizontal deal. Boom. Uh, is it this one? Yeah, that looks good. Compile and save okay and this this will get us like the basic functionality so hopefully you get something that looks like this I like to collapse these so it's more manageable looking okay not bad okay we just need to name a couple things before we start doing code so inside the first horizontal box will have our buttons and we need to name these buttons uh, I'm gonna call it increase combo one increase combo two and in increase combo three Then we'll do the same thing, but decrease buttons here. So all the variables have names now. Uh, on all the buttons, we're gonna get rid of this background color. Select all the buttons. Yeah, enter can, well, yeah, let's do the enter as well. So with all the buttons selected, let's go to background color and I'm going to set the alpha to zero. Bam, we, we want it to look like that. Compile and save. And, oh, one more thing. With combo lock selected, search for focus. We want to make this focusable. Because next I'm going to go start some... Uh, uh, code to make this work with a gamepad. First step, check that bo that box. Compile and save, and then we'll go into the graph. All right, and then the first thing we're gonna do in the graph is make a new function called set button array. This is going to help with the gamepad logic. 
And basically we need to take all the button variables and uh, pull... Is there a way I could do it? With... No, just one at a time. Okay, you have to drag them out one at a time. With the enter. Doesn't matter the order. I'm kind of OCD though, I always have to line them up. Bear with me. I'll just get them close. And then drag off of one of them and make array. If I could type. And we're add six more pins. Connect them all up. Ooh. And we will promote this to a variable called button array. <laughs> Just like that. Compile, save. Let's go back to the event graph. And then on event, yeah, this one, event construct, let's call that function. Looks good. And then off of tick, we're gonna need to take our button array variable and it's going to go into a for each loop mm -hmm. well that's odd we take content Wait a second. What's going on? Yo, that was weird. I don't know why it was not pulling up the for each loop, but this is what you need. I know there's a weird bug going on. I'll just edit that. Okay, and then, <laughs> and then off of array element, we're gonna check if it has keyboard focus. It's a node called has keyboard focus. This will go into a branch. This will make sense in a second. And if it has focus, we're gonna set the background color. Drag off of this and look for set background color. And this is gonna highlight the button. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick like a, a red turn down a little bit but this is just uh, gonna be the color of the button in focus and then we'll do set background color for all the other buttons they'll be blank and to make them blank I'm basically gonna set the alpha to zero make sure that's hooked up And also off of the 
event construct. We're going to set a button to be in focus when the widget opens. See, which one do we want to do? I think when it opens, I want this button to be selected. So that's increase combo one. Let's drag out increase combo one, get, and this is gonna just go set keyboard focus. Compile and save. And for testing purposes, let's go to the level blueprint. Open level blueprint. And off of, let's just do off of begin play. We'll, we'll draw the widget just for testing purposes. Create widget. Uh, combo. And then add to viewport. All right, and then we can go ahead and test it, I believe. Yep, now I got my controller here. And it's all working. Well, the gamepad is working. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's get the buttons, buttons to, do things. to do things. We're gonna need uh, new variables. Let's call it uh, combo one. It's gonna be an integer. And we're gonna need three of them. So combo two. And duplicate that. Combo three. Compile and save. Okay, now we're going to start with the increase combo button. So select the increase combo one button. And we're going to go down to on clicked. And then get combo one. And when it's clicked increase, we're going to do what's called increment. It adds one and sets it in the same node. Uh, but we don't want it to go over the amount Okay, just stick with me. Let's go to drag off this. Go. Greater than four. We'll have five variables and integers start with zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So this goes into a branch. And then if it tries to go past four, then we'll set it back to zero. So let's grab combo one to set, and it sets it back to zero. Cool, and then for decrease combo one, we're gonna have very similar. Let's find our decrease combo one button, and on clicked. The nodes are real similar, so I'm just gonna duplicate that. Okay, this needs to be, okay, first let's change the variables. Oh wait, no, that's the same one, combo one. We just need to change this to a de decrement. Subtracts one and sets it. <coughs> And 
and now we'll do like a, a less than. So if it tries to go less than zero. Loops back around two, four. Okay, that's the, that's the button logic. We can apply that to combo two and three. Increase combo two. I'm going to copy increase one here. And then we'll change the variables here, which is pretty easy to do. Find your integer, and we're going to set it to two. If you go into the space right here, it, it says change node to read. Do it just like that. Just like that. Let's go to decrease. We'll group these together. Change it to two. And we will do the same thing with combo three buttons. Oops, on clicked. It's kind of repetitive. We've already done a lot in this video. So like I said, the next, this will be a series and the next part, I'll show you like different ways to implement them. And you know, you might know how to implement uh, interfaces so that this widget will talk to other objects, doors. But this one, we're just getting the, the widget working. Okay. Now we need to do the enter button and basically the enter button is just going to check if you have the correct combo. So we'll go to find the enter button and then on clicked. And, and you're gonna need to think of a, a combo that you want right now. Just for testing purposes, we could set this up a little more advanced later. But we're, we're just gonna hard set these uh, for now, for testing purposes. So basically, you wanna grab out your combo integers. And I'm just gonna set it to one, two, three, just to, just to be simple here. And we're gonna drag off this and go equal. And we'll make that equal to one. Branch node. this equal to two. If you hold down B and, and click, you get a branch. This one's to be equal to three. And then I think for testing, we'll just do a print string. This video is already past 30 minutes. I was gonna do some cool stuff, uh, but that'll be for the next video. I'll show different cool things you could do. So this will be correct.
And then if any of these fail, they will get a print string. Let's say wrong. Wrong combo, buddy. And that's if any of them fail. Okay, and we have done a lot of stuff. Uh, if you made it this far, good job. Widget stuff's a pain in the ass. Uh, but instead of getting into the interaction system, I think we're just gonna test the widget logic. So first we need to go to the designer uh, and we'll, we'll temporarily bind these, uh, these text variables. So go to combo text one and then we're gonna bind it to combo one, bind combo text to combo two, combo text three to combo text, or combo integer three. Compile and save it. And then let's, let's test it. Okay. If I just hit enter, it says wrong combo. One, two, three. Correct. Okay, we did it. So now we know where to start the logic. And we, we, we did a bunch of stuff here, so that's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the next video. I'll post it next Friday. And it, it'll, it'll be an interaction system, so you can interact with clues. And then you can go up to a keypad and interact with it. And then once the, the keypad, once you enter the right password, cool stuff happens. So good job. I'll, I'll see, see you on the next one. Okay, bye. Thank you. Like and subscribe, please, so I can justify spending all my time making games and stuff. Okay, bye-bye.